Hey, good day, it's Preso. Good to see your smiling face back here. Now, in this final episode of building the Art Deco inspired wall light fittings or wall sconces, I'm going to assemble all of the parts that I electroplated in the previous episode. Now, if you missed that, there's a playlist and I've got a link to that up above there now. You can go back and check out the series right from the very start. And as part of the assembly, we need to fit the decorative glass tubing to the front of these light fittings as well. Now that tubing acts as a screen for the light bulbs, it also acts as a diffuser, but it's also just a lovely decorative effect as well. Now once we've got that done, we'll put these up on the wall and we'll turn them on and commission them and see the light for the very first time. And right at the end of this episode, I'm going to update the world map and I'll show you some new locations that have come in since the last video that I did. So um, let's have a look on the bench here and see what we're doing today. On the bench here, I've got all of the bits that I need to get this assembly done. And you see here, I've got the frame partly assembled. So on this end of the rectangular frame, I've already bolted in place one of these end caps, including the brass casting that we electroplated last time. But before I can put that on there, we need to get the glass tubes in place and fit them between the two end plates. Now, this uh, glass tubing is borosilicate glass tube otherwise known as Pyrex. And the thing is, uh, when I bought this, it was advertised as being, I think, 250 millimeters long and 10 millimeters diameter. The reality is that it's quite variable. So some of these pieces of tubing were 10.1, some 10.2, some a little bit under, and that created a bit of a problem in working out how I was going to capture those tubes all the way around this uh, 3D printed part. But we sort of got that resolved and I talked about that earlier on. The other issue is that the lengths of these tubes are quite different and what I had to do is sort through all of the tubes that I bought and pick out the ones that were closest to the same length. Now some uh, of this set here were still too long to fit between these two end plates and I think that's that one there, there's one there and one there. So what I had to do is grind that glass tubing back. Uh, I did that using a diamond grinding disc and I was able to get about one or two millimeters off the length of that. Took a while, but I got it done. So I've checked all of these now and they all fit. Some of them are a bit short, but there's enough room in this 3D printed part to still capture that tubing and make sure it doesn't fall out. So here's one here that I ground the end on. And you see it's got that sort of a matte appearance to it and all the glass dust is still inside there. So I need to clean that before we do the assembly. So I'll just show you how I ground the glass and got that to length. I showed this gadget in uh, an earlier video that I did. Now, this fits into a socket on the end of my welding bench. And these were designed for AEG drills. They're actually made by AEG. And uh, in this socket here, I can clamp all sorts of accessories and tools. I've got a vise that goes in there. I've got a small anvil. And uh, it makes it really handy to uh, put things like electric drills in that socket there and then you can use the drill as a power source for a polishing mop or a sander or whatever. Now the tool that I'm using to grind the glass with is this one here. Now this is a diamond wheel. These are designed for sharpening tungsten carbide tipped router bits, wood, wood router bits. And with that in the chuck, you can spin that at fairly high speed. And normally you'd put the face of the uh, router bit against that diamond face there and grind it that way. But with this tubing, I can just simply rotate the tube against the face of the diamond disc and it does a reasonable job. It's a bit slow, but in most cases I only need to remove about one or one and a half millimeters off the length to make it fit. So with that done, I've just got to clean the dust out of the tubing and then we can get on with the assembly. So here's our brass frame here. It's got the two light fittings assembled onto it. It's got one of the end caps screwed in place, but I have to put all of the glass tubes now in place and then put the other end cap on. Now to get that assembly done, I've got some 3D printed parts. So this former here with the rubber band over the top will allow me to slip all the glass tubes in and it has the same diameter as the inside of the finished glass tube array. And this other 3D printed part with the dowels in it will allow me to slide the glass tubes in place and that'll keep one end sort of aligned. But I can't assemble that with these formers in place. So when I've got the glass tubes wrapped around this uh, black 3D printed part here, I'll be able to use these other ones and they can be held in place with masking tape. Anyway, it'll make more sense when you see it happening. 
So what I decided to do is to fit the two outside tubes first and they just slip underneath the rubber band there. We'll get another one in place. And they're sort of held captive against this little ledge here. And that allows me then to fit this other 3D printed part and the dowels inside those glass tubes. And then you just keep doing that. So we'll keep working from the outside toward the center. And then this part can come off once the tubes are all aligned. And we're gonna tape these parts inside. Anyway, I'm just gonna do it. You'll work it out. Well, there's the whole glass tube assembly done temporarily and what I need to do now is get those two black 3D printed parts out because I can't assemble the glass tubes into their final position because that big black part there would not be able to be removed if I did that. So what I'm going to do is just put some tape around this temporarily and then I can tape the rubber band off. The name of the game here is just to stop everything collapsing when you go to do the final assembly and get it all in place. All right, now I can put, um, what can I do? I can put these two parts inside. No, oh, I can put one of them inside. I'll get that one taped in place. Okay, now I think I can remove this piece. And put the other former in place. Okay, now I think this part comes out. just juggle the glass tubes into their final resting place at this end here. Okay, so here's our other cap, completely with the 3D printed part with the, uh, like the receptacles in it for the ends of the tube. And if we're lucky, that should just slide in place. When we turn that over, we can get to the screw holes in the back. That's got it. So I can see through here now, those screw holes are clear. All right, mission accomplished. Now, I should be able to just cut the tape on these now. They just come out like that. And we just take the rest of the tape off.
All right, well, there's the finished assembly. You can hear it. it's a little bit rattly, but those glass tubes won't fall out of there. Some people were concerned that I hadn't thought about earthing this assembly, but there's a drilled and tapped hole there and a little brass clamp that will hold the earth wire directly against the brass frame. So I need to tidy up this wiring. I've got a drilled hole in this side of the frame here, and I can use a cable tie to just simply hold that wiring back out of the way so it won't uh, sort of get in the way later on when we go to assemble it on the wall. And that's the next step. Yeah, nearly forgot about these. Now, these are 450 lumen or four and a half watt LED bulbs. And uh, these are also dimmable. And some people had asked early on whether the heat from these bulbs is gonna be a problem enclosed in this glass array and the brass frame here. And also given that I was gonna have a 3D printed part to attach to the wall. Now I did some tests, I ran one of these bulbs quite a while and I got my infrared thermometer out and checked it and it was nowhere near the melting point of that uh, 3D printed plastic. It was about 50 degrees Celsius, which is sort of like a bit of a hot day in Australia. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it should be fine. Uh, of course, the heat will build up a little bit inside this assembly, but I'd guess it's only gonna to get to about 60 degrees C. So these are not like um, in a lounge room or a uh, you know, passageway. These are actually in our bedroom. So they're gonna get used for a short period of time, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes at the most. And oh, you can see here where I've attached the wiring to the back of the frame there with that little cable tie. We just gotta try and be a little bit neat about this and make sure that none of this wiring sort of gets in the way uh, when we go do the assembly. So this mounting plate, this metal one's gonna go and we're gonna replace that with the 3D printed part. There's the earth wire that will screw directly to the frame of the new light. And if you look in the back here, you can see the corrosion coming through that plating there. And that just drives me insane. And if you have a look at the top of the light fitting, uh, that's even worse. Yeah, that's just nasty. And that's why they're going. Okay, well, I removed the old bracket and the rest of the light. And typically for a project like this, uh, the new mounting plate isn't as wide as the old one. So I'm gonna have to patch all of the paint here and get that all tidied up. So that's another what a day <laughs> waiting for patching cement to dry and paint and so on. So yeah, we're gonna be without lights for a day. Okay, it's so the next day and the paint that I put around uh, the hole in the wall here is dried and uh, looks pretty good. This is the 3D printed part that I screwed to the wall and this is gonna take the brass frame and allow me to attach it to two captive nuts uh, one on either side there. So I've already attached the wiring. This is the earth wire that will get earthed out to the frame of the light. Yes, the power's off. And I had to check this to make sure this was level up on top here before I screwed in the last screw. And I thought it was prudent to actually check to see if the brass frame will fit and that I can get at the two captive nuts from the outside of the frame. So. That's how it's going to go and I'm going to have to somehow attach all of the wiring and line it up with the screw holes, get the screws in there. And uh, I'm standing on top of a six foot ladder. We've got 10 foot high ceilings or three meter ceilings in the house here. And it's, this is up quite high on the wall. So it's going to be a bit of a mission, but uh, we'll see if we can get there. So here's what the light looks like up on the wall. Now, I'm sorry I didn't get any footage of me actually doing the installation, but it was one of those jobs where I needed to be on top of the ladder, working very close to the wall. You needed three hands to be able to connect the wires and support the light at the same time. So there was also no opportunity to get a camera in and around where I was working. But this is what it looks like. Now I'm gonna turn the lights on now and we'll see what it looks like with a full ambiance of Art Deco lighting. Now I know it's gonna be hard to capture with my camera. Let's see if I can adjust the lighting or get a better effect here. I've turned the dimmer right down, but it's still overexposed. Uh, let me pull the camera back and we'll try and do a pan across the wall and give you a better look at the full installation. It'll give you a better sense of what it looks like in the room with all the rest of the furniture. 
and I have got those lights turned down really, really low. But at full brightness, lights up the room, no problem at all. And I think they look proper Art Deco. Now remember, these lights are in our bedroom, and you're probably saying to yourself, what about that noise? Well, quite frankly, that's none of your business and what we get up to in the privacy of our own bedroom. And what I meant to say was, I'm 64 years old and that sort of thing doesn't happen around here much anymore. Although my wife did send me a memo just the other day and said there's a good chance there was some love and affection coming my way soon. But quite frankly, I doubt it. Oh, wait a minute. Is this a leap year? I need to check that. Anyway, let's go and have a look at the world map. Here's the current state of the map. Now this is after updating with nearly three pages of new locations and I tried as hard as I could to get some extra pins in this area here but just physically cannot fit anymore. Same in and around this area here. I tried. Uh, if you sent me your location I did check it out but yeah sometimes just can't fit any more in. Anyway let's have a close up look at some of the more interesting ones that came in. Let's start with Canada. These are two areas that the wife and I want to visit next year. So we've got uh, Halifax and Prince Edward Island, uh, specifically Summerside. And uh, yeah, hoping to get there. Never been to the east coast of Canada, and then it's just a short hop across to Europe. So maybe we'll get to do that as well. Look how packed it is in here. Okay, here we are right on the border between France and Spain. Beautiful seaside town called Biarritz. Love to go there one day. Okay, I'm going to swing by India and Mumbai. This one here really blew me away. This is a place called Rida in Kazakhstan. Here's a couple of interesting ones in Brazil. So we got Florianopolis and Curitiba. I hope that's the right pronunciation. Here we are in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Now, everything I've learned about this place has come from watching Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Stunning landscape, very harsh, much like inland Australia, except without the mountains. <laughs> Pretoria in South Africa, Townsville, Queensland, Australia. Benyoles in Southeast Spain, just near Girona. So we're in Jerusalem in Israel. A lot of conflict over there at the moment. Honestly, you guys, you should just sit down with your neighbors across the border, have a few beers, sit around the fire, talk things out. You got more in common than you realize. We've got Calvinia in South Africa and Durban. Red Deer, Alberta about halfway between Calgary and Edmonton. This little pink one here is Selkirk, Manitoba, just north of Winnipeg. This green pin here is right up on the tip of Northern Ireland, a place called Ahogel, Ballymena. As you can see, this whole area in here is chocker block with pins, but interestingly, I got a viewer from a place called Frankfort sent in their location. I went looking for it, and would you believe there's a Frankfort in Kentucky, Missouri, Indiana, and Illinois. Got no idea which one, but thanks to the viewer in Frankfurt. Well, I hope you saw your location on the map today and thank you to all those people who have sent in where they live in the world. Now, I try as hard as I can to put a pin in, but sometimes it's just not possible. But I do always check out the locations on Google Maps. So I love to look around to see what the architecture's like, what the landscape's like, what goes on in that part of the world. It's a bit like virtual travel. And next year, wife and I hope to get away for an actual overseas trip. Uh, we're looking to go to the east coast of Canada and then hop across to Europe and maybe down into sort of uh, the eastern, northeastern part of the USA. Now, it depends on how our dollar goes. It's never good against the American dollar. Not too bad against the euro at the moment. So that's probably where we'll concentrate most of our travel. Now, uh, I'm also going away to New Zealand uh, next month and I'll be away for about four weeks and during that time I've got two videos still to come out. Uh, one of them is on zinc plating and the other one is, uh, well I'm not going to tell you actually, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit of a secret. Uh, it's going to be released along with the Rough Cuts 2022 hashtag video bomb uh, that's being organised by Emma Ritson. But that one will come out on the 1st of October. Anyway. That's it for me today. Thanks for hanging about during the build of the Art Deco lamps. It's been a real roller coaster ride. I've learned a lot. I hope you have too. And that's the aim of what I do here on this channel is just to show you what I do in my workshop. I'm not an expert. It's just allowing you to look over my shoulder as I do things around the place. And hopefully there's something that you will pick up, some little tip or trick or something you've never seen before that will help you. So having said that, it's Prezzo signing out for now. 
I'll catch you next time. See ya.